بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن وعله إن شاء الله today we will um, go over the meaning of the passage in Surah Al-Baqarah that begins with ayah number 94 and goes until ayah number 101 in ayah number 94 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says قُلْ إِنْ كَانَتْ لَكُمُ الدَّارُ الْآخِرَةُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَالِقَةً مِنْ دُونِ النَّاسِ فَتَمَنَّوْا الْمَوْتَ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still talking about the children of Israel. So he commands the Prophet وسلم, say to them, In kanat lakum al if the abode of the hereafter, i.e. paradise, if the abode of the hereafter is reserved for you, especially Khalifatam min dunina. Instead of anybody else, it's only reserved for you, especially. Then wish for death if you are truthful. The, um, the Jews, among the things that they claimed, was that only they will enter Jannah. And nobody else will enter Jannah. Because they said that they were the awliya of Allah. They were the chosen people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here, uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, he explained this ayah by saying that Allah told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to do mubahala with the Yahud, with the Jews. And mubahala means that you make a dua and I make a dua and the one who is lying will be destroyed as a result of that dua. So the idea here is, if you believe that the paradise is reserved for you, then you wish for death, and we will wish for death. And the one that dies will be the liar. Okay? There's another place in the Qur'an also where Mubahala is talked about. It will come later, insha'Allah ta'ala, in Surah Ali Imran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even uses the word Nabtahil. So, this is the idea here. You wish for death. If you truly believe that you're going to Jannah, then you wouldn't have a problem wishing for death, right? Because you're going to Jannah. So, then Allah says, وَلَنْ يَتَمَنَّوْهُ أَبَدًا بِمَا قَدَّمَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ They will never wish for it. Why? بِمَا قَدَّمَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ Because of their sins. Because of what their hands have earned, literally. What her hand, their hands have sent forward. I.e. the actions that they have committed, they know what's coming as a consequence of their actions. And therefore, they will never wish for death. Wallahu alimun bil zalimin, and Allah is uh, Allah has full knowledge of the wrongdoers, the zalimin, and so He knows their their about their wrong, and He will punish them for it. Walla tajidannahum ahraf al nasi ala hayati wa min al ladina ashrafu. You will find them the most greedy among people about life. Even more greedy than the polytheists. They want to live, they love this life more than even the idol worshippers. Why? Because they know that they're going to hell. So they don't want to go there as, as long as possible. يَوَدُّ أَحَدُهُمْ لَوْ يُعَمَّرُ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ وَمَا هُوَ بِمُزَحْزِحِهِ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ أَنْ يُعَمَّرُ 
Wallahu basirun bima ya'malun One of them wishes to live for a thousand years But even if he was to live for a thousand years وَمَا هُوَ بِمُزَحْلِحِي مِنَ الْعَذَابِ That would not protect him or save him from the punishment أي عمر Even if he was to live وَاللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِمَا يَعْمَلُونَ And Allah is watching what they do. قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ عَدُوًّا لِجِبْرِيلَ فَإِنَّهُ نَزَّلَهُ عَلَى قَلْبِكَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Say to them, O oh Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, Whoever is an enemy of Jibreel, then he has surely brought it down upon your heart by the permission of Allah. مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ Confirming that which came before it وَهُدًا وَبُشْرًا لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ And as a guidance and good news for the believers This ayah is a response to an incident that happened Where Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله تعالى عنه He was with a group of Jews And um, there's different riwayat According to some of them This conversation took place Between the Jews and the Prophet ﷺ. In another narration It took place between the Jews And Umar ibn al-Khattab But the idea of the conversation Is very similar In that the Jews Asked Sayyidina Umar Or Rasulullah ﷺ, Which angel Brings down revelation To your Prophet so Sayyidina Umar replied and said, Jibreel does. So they responded and they said, That is the angel that brings war and killing. That is our enemy. If you had said that Mika'il was bringing down revelation to him, then Mika'il is our friend because he brings down rain. And Rahmah from the heavens. And if you had sat down, it was Mika'il, then we would have followed him and we would have believed in him. Until today, brothers and sisters, until today, the Jews, their superior, the superior angel in their books is Michael, not Gabriel. Michael is the superior angel. They love Michael more than they love Gabriel. Because they believe that Gabriel brought down commands of war and, and, and made things difficult for them. Whereas Michael was the nice one. Okay? So when they heard, even at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, that Jibreel is the one bringing down the revelation, they said that, no, we hate Jibreel and Mikael also hates Jibreel. So Sayyidina Umar said, don't you believe, because this is the belief of the Jews, don't you believe that Jibreel and Mikael sit on either side of the throne of God? That Gabriel sits on one side and Michael sits on the other side of the throne of God? How can they hate each other? That's not possible. That's not, that's not possible. So he left and then Allah Azza wa revealed this ayah. The other reason why they hated Jibreel is because they blamed him for bringing down the revelation to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because they wanted revelation to come to one of the Jews, one of the children of Israel, because they believed they were the chosen people. So they hated Jibril for that, and so Allah responds by saying, Jibril is not doing this out of his own. Why are you hating on him? قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ عَدُوَ لِجِبْرِيلَ فَإِنَّهُ نَزَّلَهُ عَلَى قَلْبِكَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Say whoever is an enemy of Jibreel, then he only brings down the Quran upon your heart by the permission of Allah. And this Quran that he's bringing down to you by the permission of Allah is only confirming the revelations that came before it. And as a good news and as a uh, guidance for the believers. مَنْ كَانَ عَدُوًّا لِلَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَجِبْرِيلَ وَمِيْكَالِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَدُوٌ لِلْكَافِرِينَ Whoever is an enemy of Allah and His angels 
and malaika are angels. Rusul here, Rusul means messengers, but here it's not referring to the human messengers, it's referring to the angelic messengers, because among the angels there are those that are messengers and there are those that are regular angels. So Jibreel is a messenger angel. So here Allah says, whoever is an enemy of Allah and his angels as a broad genus, all the angels, and Rusulihi, those special angels that are messengers among them, wa Jibreel wa Mikal, even more special now. So from a, a subset of the angels are the Rusul. A subset of the Rusul are, the, are Jibreel and Mikal. Okay, by the way, there are different uh, ways of pronouncing this, not, not in the Quran, but in the Arabic language. The Arabs used to say Jibreel, Jibra'il, Mikal, Mika'il, and so on. Okay, and there's even different qira'at of how to uh, pronounce these, but in Hafs we say Jibreel wa Mikal. So, whoever is an enemy of Allah and his angels and his messengers and Jibreel and Mikal, then indeed Allah is an enemy of those who disbelieve. And this is a lesson for us that we should never show enmity to the awliya of Allah Azza wa Jal. Should never show enmity to those that are friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because when we do that then Allah declares war upon us as the hadith says of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And we don't know who is the wali of Allah. You see? We don't know who is the wali of Allah, so we should try as long as it's a believer that we should not harbor hatred against uh, someone who believes in Allah and His Messenger وسلم, because we don't know they may be a wali of Allah. وَلَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ آيَاتٍ بَيِّنَاتٍ وَمَا يَكْفُرُ بِهَا إِلَّا الْفَاسِقُونَ And indeed, we have sent down upon you clear signs. And only those disbelieve in these signs that are fasiqun, that are wicked, that are corrupt. Is it that every time they make a covenant, they throw it away, i.e. they break their covenant? Every time they make a covenant, they break that covenant. بَلْ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Actually, most of them do not believe. It's the, the, the reason why they keep breaking their covenant, they keep breaking their promise. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah has talked about the covenant that children of Israel had made with Allah azza wa jal. And how in the past, even at the time of Musa alayhi salam, they kept breaking the covenant. They kept breaking the covenant. Even now, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes, they had made a covenant that they will believe in the Prophet that comes at the end of time. They had made a covenant at the time of Musa. They still again break the covenant by disbelieving. So Allah Azza wa is saying, every time you make a covenant, you, you break it. And then he says, actually, the root cause here of keeping to break the covenant is that there's no iman. There's no real iman. And this is a lesson for us. That every time we disobey Allah Azza wa Jal, it's a sign that my iman is weak. As the Prophet وسلم, said, that when the person commits zina, they don't have iman. When the person lies, they don't have iman. When the person commits the sin there at that moment, iman is weak, very weak. So the more that we commit sins, the more it's a sign that our iman is lacking. And so the way to overcome the sin is to increase our iman. Increase our iman. There are different ways of increasing our iman. But one of the best ways is to recite the Qur'an. Because Allah Azza says that those that recite the Qur'an properly, زَادَتْهُمْ imana, That it increases them in their iman. Especially if we do it with reflection and deliberation. وَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا مَعْهُمْ نَبَذَ فَرِيقٌ مِّنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ نَبَذَ فَرِيقٌ مِّنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَرَاءَ ظُهُورِهِمْ كَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ The last ayah for today, that when 
a messenger comes to them from Allah, i.e. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, confirming that which is with them, i.e. the Torah and the revelation and the law that they had received through Musa alayhi salam, confirming that which is with them, when the messenger has come, confirming that which is with them, what do they do? نَبَذَ فَرِيقٌ مِّنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَرَاءَ ظُهُورِهِمْ A group of people from the people of the book throw away the book of Allah behind their backs. This is an expression that means that they ignore, they turn away from their own book because their own book has told them about this prophet. They ignore it, they turn away from it. It's as if they're throwing it behind their backs. As if they don't know anything. As if they don't know anything. Meaning that they knew. They knew the signs of the Prophet ﷺ, but it's as if they don't know anything. They, they put it behind their back. They forget about it. They ignore it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from falling into the characteristics of the Jews. al maghdubi alayhim, those who earn the wrath of الله سبحانه وتعالى آمين يا رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله